Hi, everyone. We just start now. Thank you for joining us um, to the Glycemic Variability uh, Conference. Uh, my name is Tenny Kedjo. I'm a diabetes nurse educator. I work with uh, people who live with diabetes for more than 18 years now. I work with Dr. Yves Robitaille. Yves, you can... Uh... Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us this, uh, this uh, afternoon. Uh, I'm a specialist in internal medicine since 1996. I've uh, devoted most of my career in taking care of people suffering from diabetes. And um, in, uh, in 2016, with Tammy, we co-founded the Centre de Médecine Métabolique de la Naudière, that is a, a, which is a specialized clinic, which is dedicated not to, to patients suffering um, from a, a, any, I would say, metabolic disease, but um, diabetes is at the cent is is the heart of our mission, and we focus a lot on um, on using technologies uh, in treating diabetes. This is our our, our main uh, our our main strength, I I would say. Um, we will discuss glycemic variability because. Uh, for us, it, it's it's an important thing. It's an important part of the care given to people suffering diabetes because this is this is a data that is probably relatively new to all of us. But this the glycemic variability existed for long, well before we could measure it in any way. But it was hard to detect you using only finger pricks to measure blood glucose since. Since we have now the CGM technologies, which stands for gluco uh, continuous glucose monitoring, we now have around 300 uh, measurements every day uh, concerning blood glucose man management. So it's much easier to, to see and, and if, uh, measure and evaluate uh, what is the variability and what can be its impact on both blood glucose control, the risk of getting high or getting low, but also uh, by itself as a risk factor for developing any complication from diabetes. Should it be short, medium, or long-term? So this is now a, an important part of the evaluation, I would say. And this needs to be addressed to uh, with your, your, your team every time you have an encounter. You know, we always discuss about the importance of asking questions about hypoglycemia when we meet with our patients, but uh, the variability should be addressed at, uh, me measured uh, with using CGM addre addressed at every encounter you have with your team. Um, and I, I will just go with a, a short notice. Uh, we, here at the clinic, we only, we only treat adult patients, but we know that in our attendees today, there will be some adolescents, there will be some uh, parents of kids suffering diabetes. And what we will say is probably exact and correct for uh, most adult patients, but regarding kids, child uh, and adolescents, there could be some differences in the, the goals we try to meet. Um, so, you, you will need after this, if you wish to learn more, you will need to discuss this with your team so that you make sure that the, the goals about variability are in line with what you expect and that you don't expect too much. Because we know that, um, we'll talk a little bit about the, the, the causes of variability and adolescence per se, is, is a major cause of variability, like is menopause and other occurrences during the life. So, so the, 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 the teams dedicated to the care of pediatric patients will maybe put less emphasis on the variability, but it still should be something that is measured and checked. So Tammy, I will let you introduce the what is variability? What is the importance of variability? And anytime, if you have questions, just feel free to type them in the Q&A and we'll answer them live during the session. 
And please use the Q&A section, not the uh, chat. Not the chat. It's more easier for us to don't have to go to the different uh, place for uh, read your question and uh, give you an answer. And just think about the uh, an important thing. I think it's you know the variability listening country. It's very different patient to another another patient. This is the reason why it's a little bit more hard for us because we don't know your medical history. And if you have specific uh, question about your condition, it's a little bit more hard to answer because we don't know uh, all your history. And now we can just start with the, the, the summary. Uh, you know, variability glycemic is not uh, a new information, but for you, yes, because you can see the result when you look on the PGA or the AGP day after day when you use a glycemic control in uh, the CGM. When you use blood glucose um, testing, it's a little bit more hard to see them, but we can address that differently. You just have to take more uh, blood glucose each of the day after day, but three, four, five, six, seven times during a day if you want to know if you have variability or not. It's a little bit more hard if you don't use CGM uh, currently. And today we talk about the consequence about the variability, if you have a lot of variability or less variability, and we will talk about what is the, 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 what, what is the impact I can have to the glycemic variability day after day. And we know we can do something for reduce it. The Karabtaya can. Uh... Yes, of course. So, what is what is in fact what is variability? Variability is nothing else than how often, how fast, and how big are the changes in your blood glucose uh, from day to day week to week, month to month, but also hour to hour. So the, 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 the causes of variability will be numerous and they will have different impacts. Uh, like, you know, like uh, exercising will have an impact over the few next hours. Uh, menstrual cycle will have an impact over the month and so on. Pregnancies will have an impact on variability for a few months and so on. So the variability is just a way to, to try to express how the glucose, blood glucose changes during the day, during the week, during the month, and so on. Okay, And per se, by itself, um, uh, glucose variability is now renowned as a cause of developing any complication for di uh, uh, related to the diabetes. It's just, it not just, it's not just only a matter of high blood sugar or low blood sugar that both put a stress on the body, not a psychological stress, but really a physical stress. And this stress will um, give some reactions that can have impacts on the body functioning on the short term, short term, medium term, and long term. And the variability per se, so going, starting from low and going high, starting from high and going low, uh, will also have an impact on, will, will give some, uh, will have some consequences on, on the body and will Im impact some stress, physical stress again, that can lead to short, medium, and high, medium and high, long-term complications related to the diabetes. So not only is variability a, a cause of high blood sugars and low blood sugars, but it's also per se uh, a condition that can lead to bad outcomes uh, on, uh, on the body. So there are many ways to, to to see and interpret the, what is the variability. Like Tammy said, we can, with finger pricks, uh, get a rough estimate of how the glucose is varying during the day or, or during the month. The trick with that is that the more you do some finger pricks, the more data you're gonna get. And with the help of an application, we there are many applications now, we can 
just, not just get those data from your blood glucose reader, but we can also uh, manip manage them and put them, let's say, by hours. And so it, we, we can then know how variable it is during the breakfast, lunch, supper, and at, at uh, that time, or even during the night. But the best way is still to use a CGM. And in my own opinion, there's no scientific reason, no medical reason, not to have a CGM when you're, you, you're suffering type 1 diabetes. Of course, there can be uh, any, any personal reason, and all those reasons sound good at the first look, okay? It, you, can, you can dislike, have something that is stick to your skin, and, and that's correct, okay? Uh, but for just medical reasons, there's no, uh, every insulin treated pe person should have a CGM reader because we get, as I said earlier, around 300 data per day, which is something that is impossible to get with finger pricks. You understand that you, nobody here will do blood tests every five minutes just to, to keep an eye on it. So CGM will give us a lot of information and it is, most of the time from the information gotten from a CGM reader that we're going to be able to um, evaluate the, the, the variability, okay? And this is with those data that you're going to be able to evaluate the, this variability because our goal as, as uh, uh, physicians, nurses, is not to take care of your diabetes, it's to take care of you. So our goal is to teach you how to use the data to get better results day after day, hour after hour, and so that you can understand what is happening, why it is happening, and what will be the next step to prevent what did just happen, be, be it a high, be it a low, be it, well, during that day, I went from two up to 25. So what's the reason and how could I prevent it the next time I have a hypoglycemia? So this is how we and you should work with this, this instrument that is the glucose variability. So Tammy, for the next. Yes, I just want to, to tell something. Uh, you know, variability can compare to a roller coaster. Uh, some people like to go on a big roller coaster. Some people prefer the small one. But in diabetes, we prefer the roller coaster in the kids section because you would like to have day after day just a little bit of movement during the day. And if you are you have a big roller coaster, you're going fast. You're going down very fast. And this is the most important part. We have a lot of problem about the variability glycemic control. And yeah. I just want to add that because I well, think it's very important to understand what is right. what is variability. Um, and, and there's an important point here. If you look at the graphic, which shows the glucose, one day glucose with uh, two patients, Anne and Patrick, those two persons have exactly the same mean glucose value during the day. And if these results re re are reproduced day after day, then they will have the same A1C. But if you had to choose between having a control like Anne's have or like or a control that the way Patrick has it, you would choose Anne, I'm certain. So that's what we're talking about when we, we talk about variability. Anne has, her blood glucose is still, still variable, but it's not as Patrick's. And she gets the same A1C, she gets the same mean glucose, but she doesn't have the same control. Her control is way better. And it's going to be easier to adjust the treatment for Anne than it will be to adjust the treatment for Patrick. Because with Patrick, there's no way we can get rid of the hyperglycemia by adding some insulin. We'll get more hypoglycemia. And if, on the contrary, if we lower the basal insulin to get to, to get rid of those hypos glycemia, then we're going to have higher uh, glycemia. So it's going to be, it's, we're going to still have some problems. Okay. 
we talked before about how we can assess them. You, we talk about take the blood glucose. We talk about the glycemic control in the, the, the CGM who you have 290 blood glucose testing during the day. It's a little bit more than you can do it when you do a, a self-control. And when you look about the result, you can look why my glycemic control is stable or why I have um, more variability during one day, during another day. Uh, you have to look why, when it's uh, arriving. Is it all the time in the morning? Is it all the time after lunch? Uh, is it during the night? Is it when I finish my sport, finish to do some activity, when I talk some, take some alcohol or... You have to look where, when during the day you have the majority of the variability, the very, sorry about that, the variability during the day. When we talk about the variability, we always time talk about cloud. We talk about a small cloud, a large cloud. And this is when you look on the, the picture, you can see the, the blue and the gray. And the gray, it's the part where the largest um, cloud is the, the most large or variability during a specific time during the day. If you look in the morning, you have variability more or less than if you look about the lunch. When you look about the dinner, it's a little bit more hard. You can see the, the, the glycemic control go hypoglycemia, but you have hyperglycemia less than, I think it's, 15 um, millimol and and when you look about the cloud it's more easier to it's more simple to address do you have variability or uh, no variability during a specific time during the day mm -hmm. i would add that the, 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 this is in the agp part uh, P, well, agp part and this because there's a way to measure, there are some numbers, and we're going to talk on the next slides, we're going to talk about numbers, but um, this graphic is still important, even, even if it's not as precise as, as can be a number uh, percentage. Uh, this graphic is important because it shows you where are the problems, okay? So nevertheless, what is the result? What is the coefficient of variation that we're going to talk about in a few seconds? You know that the problem is at the supper time. It's not during the night. It's not uh, at the breakfast. The problem is uh, around 6 p.m. So the, this graphic is still important, but it's not as precise as the number that can be given with the coefficient of variation that we'll discuss at the next slide that you get from, still again, the AGP reports. And it, it's a number, OK? And this number, well, in, in the adult population, at least, the recommendation from the, the time in range consensus is that it should be under 36 person, which is a number, okay? And what I told you a few seconds ago about the number is, is, is true here. So you can have, like the first patient on the top, it's, it's in the black, uh, not the black, the red box, I'm sorry, uh, on the upper graphic you see a, a CV of 30.3%. Okay, that's, that's a very, very good number. But this number could be the patient we showed you on the first slide and the slide just before, where everything is fine, except at the supper where the variability gets high, okay? So you can have a, a, a perfect number, but it doesn't tell you if, the, that doesn't mean that there's no problem. So you need to have a, a look at all of uh, all of this, so just I, I, as I said, not just the number, but also how does it? How is it during the day? Okay. So as I said, the consensus says below thirty six percent, and if we still have hypoglycemia, then there's a recommend recommendation to go under thirty three percent to try to reduce the risk of hypoglycemia because. Glucose variability is a major point in the risk of getting hypoglycemia. It's a major point in the risk of getting hyperglycemia, but hypoglycemia too. Okay, so all of this needs to be addressed. So yes, remember the 36%, but remember that 
you need to keep an eye on the EGP and try to understand what is happening at a precise moment of the day to really understand what are the reasons. Is it because I my carb counting is not that good? Is it because my insulin ratio is not that good? Is it because I'm doing some exercise and I didn't manage my insulin the meal before or I didn't adjust my pump uh, an hour and a half before uh, knowing that I was going to exercise a lot. So that's why I get this variability. Some days I go high, some days I go low because of the exercise. So there are, we're going to address that later later on, but there are many reasons to this uh, variability. So remember the number, but remember the importance of the, the cloud, the AGP to better understand what how how is it measured and where are the problems it's, it's the same when you just look at hypos and everything else you're on mute i think yes i'm on mute it's more okay if you look on your cgm day after day and you look the result you can see by example 9.9 .9, but you have trend and arrow all the times or the majority of the time. And it's really, really important to look where your blood glucose going. Is it going up slowly or faster? Did they go down faster or slowly? Do you have two or three arrow? This is the, uh, they indicate how, how fast you're going down or going up. It's very important to look at that because if you have to take a decision, I take sugar or take more insulin, if you don't think about where your gluco blood glucose is going, you all the time do a mistake because if you look and down, you have, a, by example, a 6.6 .6, uh, millimole, but you have three arrow going down faster, you are now on hypoglycemia you have to take something now but if you just going to eat something if you have fixed unit by of insulin you have to give less insulin or if you're going up did i have to to give more insulin because i know i have three arrows going up very fast you have to look about the uh, the, the the arrow for adjust or take decision day after day, moment after after moment, and don't be shy to talk about your with your team, a medical team, to address that for you. If you have two or three hours, what I, I have to do? Do you have to adjust my dosage of insulin dosage, or did I have to take more carbs? Or it's really important to address that with your medical team to take the good decision. And if you you take the good decision, you have less variability and less complication during your life. If you compare uh, the, 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 the CGM result and the blood glucose when you're testing um, on your finger, it's really di different one about uh, another one because um, it's more instantaneous. Um, it's more instant, instantaneous. Centenious. <laughs> Centenious, sorry about my English. When you thought that the, your you take a blood glucose on your finger, it's more um, now. The result is for now. Your blood glucose it's five point five, and if you look on your CGM, if you go, go a flash or you look on your Dexcom G six, and you have a, a nine point nine, but you have arrow going down. It's normal. You have. 5.5 on your blood glucose when you're testing on your uh, capillary testing. This is the reason why it's different because when you have sugar on your blood, they take times to going on um, the interstitial inter 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 fluid. They have, a, I'm sorry about that. You, they take time, about 15 minutes to going on um, under your skin. This is the reason why the result is a little bit more different if you look on CGM and if you compare with the blood glucose when you're testing on your um, your finger. Do you want to add something? Uh, and this point is important because we're going to address in a few minutes, we're going to address the hypoglycemia. Okay. And 
What you need to understand is if you treat, if you're having an hypoglycemia, it should always be checked with capillary blood glucose, finger pricks, because you're measuring what is happening in the blood, not in the interstitial fluid. And because of this delay, if you don't use blood glucose to, to monitor your treatment, I'm talking about hypoglycemia here, if you're not using blood glucose to, to monitor your treatment, then there's a, a risk of overtreatment. Okay, so when you're having an hypoglycemia and treating an hypoglycemia, uh, preferently always use uh, your finger pricks to, to check the results of what you did. Okay, for the rest of the, uh, uh, the day and for the rest of the use, I think that the values from the CGM are, are as good as the values from the blood glucose. It's just that they're not measured at the same place. So there's something you should, cons you should consider this in, in the interpretation. Okay. Next. And I just want to, to tell you, if you have questions, don't be shy to address that. I know the English is not perfect, but uh, if you have questions, don't be shy. Just use the Q&A uh, section. When we talk about, the, before we talk about the um, roller coaster, this is just an example of when you're, your blood glucose going up, if you look on the, um, the roller coaster, you can see the first one, the first person who are sit on the front, they are more, re they are more um, now, the result is more now. And if you look on the last, the last one, the last person who are sit on the last um, seat, the result is a little bit different and you can compare on the result you can see on the CGM. And this is the same thing if you're going down. And if you have a flat level, it's because you just have a stable um, glucose level now. And when we talk about the variability glycemic control, if you have a um, lot of variability, you have more risk to have consequence during your life. You can have short-term consequence and you can have long-term. And the short-term, it's a little bit more of your uh, quality of life. Did I have, I don't feel great. I have headache, uh, I have nausea. Uh, I feel I have my, my energy is a little bit more uh, flat. Uh, I'm tired, I'm tired uh, physically, but psychologically too and this is more this is very 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 um, important to your quality of life because they have an impact day after day if you have a lot of uh, glycemic variability each day after day and you have more uh, hypoglycemia you can have uh, a little bit of hypo you take more sugar too much sugar sometime and you're going up and then you are in hypoglycemia, you take more insulin, you're going down. And when you're going in the roller coaster all the time, it's a little bit more hard for your body yeah. and you have more um, uh, I, I symptom I, about that. Yeah, I totally agree. It puts some stress, some physical stress on, on your, your body. And that's why you will feel so cheap, I would say, for the for a few hours and sometimes maybe for a few days because uh, your, your, your body dislikes this kind of reaction. Um, the body always is always searching for kind of a steady state. And uh, when it gets out of the steady state, it, it tries to normalize things and will do some things that will make you feel a little bit uh, cheap and there's also a stress which hires the risk of complications so we know now that uh, hyperglycemia is related to long-term complications and that's that's the main reason why we now treat diabetes so so tight it's to try to minimize the importance of hypogly of hyperglycemia so that we minimize the long-term damage but Doing, doing that, in fact, controlling hyperglycemia is quite easy, I would say between quotes, okay? Because we have some powerful tools and insulin is a powerful tool to, to fight against hyperglycemia, okay? But so the real challenge in, in, uh, in, in the blood glucose control is now to 
to, to tackle the hyperglycemia with, with, without provoking any, a, a more, more hypoglycemia. So the, the real challenge now became over the years minima, minimizing hypoglycemia because they both have, as, I, as you already know, they both have an impact on complications, short-term, medium-term, long-term. And we, we, we talked a few minutes, about a few seconds, I would say about the, the long-term complications of hyperglycemia, which we, you really well know of, okay? But we also know now that hyperglycemia and hypoglycemia both give some short-term uh, complications. Hypoglycemia, for sure. You know how you feel after a severe hypoglycemia. You're feeling cheap, mad, bad, sad, and uh, find any qualification. You lie, but you don't feel well for many hours, two, three, four hours. Some people, it's for... Even the day after, they don't feel very well when they have a severe hypoglycemia. But you can get the same results from a, a rapid, a rapid short-term hyperglycemia, a severe hyperglycemia. We'll feel exactly the same. We know that the brain is at, is at its best when the blood glucose gets, gets high. And if it's even worse if it goes really high and really fast. And when it alternates between a hypo and hyper, and hypo and hyper, it doesn't get any better. So, and this is this alternating between hyper and hypo and varying very fast or very high, very high to very low that it is what we call the variability. So hyperglycemia isn't, isn't that good on the short term. Hypoglycemia is not that good on the short term, but variability too. And variability is now linked to a higher risk of developing long-term complications too, okay? It's not just a risk, variability is, is not just a risk of, of suffering from severe hypoglycemia, but it's also per se a risk of developing long-term complications. And when you get hypoglycemia because of a high variability, you can have some heart damage, your brain won't be working good, and there's an impact on the weight too because, you know, we eat because we need some energy to live, but when you eat because you're having an IPO and you're trying to correct an IPO, and when I, I'm telling, talking about eating, taking some glucose, some dextrose, maple syrup, or any kind of fast-acting sugar that you can think of, this will have on the medium long-term an impact on your weight. Not if you do only one hypoglycemia per year, but if you're having a few per month, and then it's going to have uh, an impact eventually on your weight. And, and that's, a, that's an important point. Okay? So we have many things to consider when we're talking about hypo hyperglycemia and the, the association between the two, which is variability. The next one, Tammy. Okay. And what are the main factors about uh, variability? Well, everything that you do in your life will have an impact on your blood glucose variability. In the diabetes treatment, there are, there's an impact of drugs. And by drugs, for you specifically, we're talking about the insulin. And we now have modern insulins that have much less variability than the older ones, okay? So there's no reason why in 2022, you should be receiving any old school insulin. You should all be under the newer insulin, be it basal insulin or prandial insulin, then you, you should be on the newer insulins, except for, there are, there are exceptions. You need to understand that. There are, of course, there are exceptions because uh, there are some conditions for which we will prefer to use some older, longer term insulin, be, maybe with more variability, but because we need to control not in two hours from now, but in three to four hours from now, we maybe we're going to choose an older insulin that acts less rapidly than the newer ones. But grossly, when we're talking about having less variability, we're talking about using newer insulins. The other thing is to know, to know is that switching from multiple daily injection to insulin pump can be a way to lower the variability. Because in, in the insulin pump, we use some kind of, I would say, again, between quotes, um, a, a better insulin, but also 
uh, with the pump, we can manage instead of managing from day to day, we can manage from hour to hour and from meal to meal. And we can, it's easier to correct, it's easier to bolus uh, with a small. Um, with small snacks, well, you can put a bolus on because that's easy. You don't need to go all the time. If you can get back. So the drugs, the, the, the kind of insulin you're using, your diet will have an impact, okay? Is your car carb counting good? Are you having enough proteins, enough fat so that it lowers the, uh, the, um, the glucose absorption? So the content of a meal will have an impact on the, uh, the glucose absorption that will have by itself an impact on the variability. The activity you're doing, the exercise you're doing, if you're exercising, um, walking, they, we, this will be different from a hockey game, riding your bike, if you're doing a long ride of, let's say a hundred kilometers and you take four or five, six hours to do that, this will be different from uh, doing sprints or climbing uh, mountains. So the, the, the duration, the kind of exercise, the length of the end of exercise will have uh, also, will have its own impact on glucose variability. Um, any concurring disease like uh, having flu or anything like that will also have an impact. Um, Tammy, I'll let you go with the, the hypoglycemia. Yes, um, Dr. Robitaille explained they have too many um, too many factors, they can have a big impact to the variability glycemic control because sometimes during a day, they, they increase the risk of hypoglycemia and you do the same thing and tomorrow you have more risk to have hyperglycemia. And each factor is have a different impact patient to patient. This is the reason why it's a little bit more hard to understand what's happening with you and why someday, Wednesday, I have an hypoglycemia after my physical activity. And when we do last week, it's the same activity. I have the same level of blood, blood, blood level before starting my activity. And this time I have an hypoglycemia. The, the last time it would be okay. And they can change day after day. And I think the more important thing is to stop and understand what's happened. Did I do something different? Um, is it an illness day? Did I take alcohol last day? Um, do I have um, sufficient meal, protein, fiber? If my, my carb counting is good or not, or I just give an approximation of the result, or uh, did I have a um, fixed unit of insulin or you have to think about all the aspects they can increase the risk of a variability because the same factor can give you a risk of hypoglycemia and another day the same factor can give you a risk of hyperglycemia. And if you don't treat the, with the good, um, don't take the good decision, you can increase the risk of variability glycemic control. I just give you an example. If you have a pump with automod and you start eating and you don't ask the pump, you eat now uh, 45 gram of carbs. They, the pump just see the, your blood glucose increase, but they don't see you eat now. They just give you more bolus. And when you decided to give your bolus 10 or 15 or 20 minutes after start eating, you give full bolus. You have your full bolus plus the bolus the pump gave to you. And this is the reason why you can go in on hypoglycemia after the lunch. This is the reason why you have to just stop and look what's happened with my the, the, the moment now, why I have increased the variable glycemic, why I have hypoglycemia now, why I have uh, hyperglycemia, did I forgot something, did I don't do the, they don't take the good decision. And the same factor is, are present on hypo and hyperglycemia because they just have different impact day after day on your body. This is the reason why it's a little bit more hard, but uh, again, it's very hard, it's very important to stop and just look what's happened now. And can I explain why I have an hypo or hyperglycemia yeah. to 
yeah. to have less variability at the time. Yeah, I totally agree with you. And this is key, what you just said, uh, Taimi. Um, in in the, the prevention of or in the treatment of variability, uh, we as a team have our goal is to teach you uh, what can cause the variability, but the key to understand what, what is happening and why, why is it there at such such and such moment. You're, you're the one, you as a, as a patient, um, you, you're the one who has the key about the understanding. But to, to, to realize this, you need to pause and ask yourself some questions. So why is this happening? Why did this happen? Because it's not in three or four months when we are gonna meet us, but we must, by us, I mean your team. It's not in three or four months when you're gonna meet your team that you will be able to, ans to answer what did happen and what, what could have been done, done to prevent this high or this low. So when things happen, you need to to take a pause, observe, analyze, and take notes, so that you're going to be able in three to four months to 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 give these notes to your 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 your, your care team, and they will be able to help you better understand and teach you what what you should do next time. So this is this is an important thing. Okay. And before adjust your insulin, it's important to understand why and why I have hypo, why I have hyperglycemia. And we talk about the trend the arrow before. It's really important to when you you have to take a decision to look where my my blood glucose is going. Is it going up? Is it going down? Fast, slowly? Because if you want to take the good decision to have less variability, it's really, really, really important to just stop to look where is your blood glucose now and where they're going. Because if you want to uh, address your variability, if you don't do that, you will increase the risk of variability during day after day. And if you go on the type one better uh, that come on the, um, the website, you can find um, a tool to help you to address what is the, the, the factor can increase the risk of hypoglycemia or increase the risk of hyperglycemia. And you have a great tool to address that and you can just uh, put a check if you have, oh, this is one of the reasons I see. And when you go to your appointment with your medical team, you can just bring the paper and say, and say oh, what is, well, what uh, you, you can find now what is the um, specific factor can have an impact on your body? This is the factor can increase IPO, and I observe that factor can increase hyperglycemia. And you can address that with your team, and it would be better for your team to have more information to help you with um, the variability glycemic day after day. <clears throat> Sorry about that. And I think it's really, really important to address hypoglycemia because. I know you're sometimes afraid about the hypoglycemia, you're afraid about um, the fever, hypoglycemia, but you need to have emergency plan on you all the time, because if you don't have it, you can increase the risk of fever hypoglycemia. And it's really, really important to have some fasting sugar on you, uh, Dexpor or juice or um, Baximi, because you need to have an emergency plan on you all the time. Dr. Abtai, I can uh, let you... Oh, yes, of course. Something so, or... And, uh, of course, well, we talked about the adjustment of the insulin dosage. So if we, we think uh, about uh, long-term insulin dosage, all the other things that can affect glucose reliability need to be fixed first before changing a regular dosage. I would say, let's say, like a, a, a carb ratio at, at meals. This is the last thing we're going to change to affect, uh, not the control, but the variability, okay? If there's a need to change the, the carb ratio at a meal, the, the variability needs to be fixed first because 
changing the ra ratio will have an impact on every meal, but always in the same direction. So if, if after two or three hours after a meal, you're having problems with hypoglycemia or hyperglycemia, and we only change the carb ratio, then we're going to make things worse. Maybe less hypos, but more hypers, or the contrary, we could have less hypers, but more hypos. So when it comes to the long-term adjustment of the insulin, um, this is the last thing to do, okay? Uh, lowering the basal insulin because of a lot of hypoglycemia is the thing to do because we want to get rid of those hypoglycemias, but we it's, it's at the price of a, a bigger expression of hyperglycemia. So after we, we lowered the basal insulin because of the hypos, then there's something that's, that needs to be done about the variability so that we can set our, our insulin, our basal insulin back uh, after we got rid of the variability. Okay, so just changing insulin dosages when there's a lot of variability, I mean, on the long term is not the solution. It's, it's not the way to go, which is different from, um, from the short term, short term insulin. Like, you know, you know, you're going to do some exercise this afternoon. So at, at, the, at lunch or with your insulin pump, you'll have to do something on your insulin because you're going to exercise, you're going for a bike ride, you're going for hiking or anything. Um, so you need to do something with your insulin before the exercise, but that's because the exercise will have an impact on your blood glucose. It's not because you're having a lot of variability on the short term. So it could be a, a long-term solution to play with your insulin before an exercise, but it, we, you need to understand what are the impact of your exercise, your specific kind of exercise in your specific case the impact of this exercise at this moment of the day on your blood glucose control and your variability. And then you'll be able to take better decisions regarding your insulin adjustment when you're considering this kind of exercise of this or this or this and so on, okay? So I think this, this slide is, is called to summarize, and but this is the key, and this is what you need to, to remember from this. Uh, it, it's cool to know about variability. It's cool to, to go and see your team and ha address the question of variability, but it's on the day-to-day -day control that you will be able to, 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 to do things. So you have your CGM, you, you, you take a two weeks reading at home at night. Well, you, you, you're, you're suffering insomnia. So you're, I'm gonna do something to get to bed. So let's go and check my blood glucose the last two, three weeks. And then you're going to look for the, the, the moments of high variability. So this is the observation. Then you're go, you're, you'll go with the analyze. You remember when I told you, take notes when things happen, okay? Take notes. And then it's time to read your notes. Okay, on that day, I did a low, but before there was this, that, this, that, and, and so on. And this day, okay, I had a high at the same time two days later, but this was because of. So then because you took notes, you can now analyze. And after you, do, you, you, you did analyze, then you can decide, what am I gonna do? Is it something I can fix by myself? Well, my ratio looks not that good. So, well, I, I, and I'm pretty sure that's a problem of ratio. So maybe I should try just small changes in the good direction and see what is happening. It's better, all right, I got it. So I'm gonna, do, or, well, no, that's too, that's too complicated. I, I'm not sure what, what I should do. So I know my next appointment is in three months, but it, it took too far. So I'm gonna call, ask for an earlier appointment just to address this specifically, this problem. And then you're gonna, which is what I call act. So, but observation analysis are the major things. And to be able to analyze, you need to take notes. And all the apps that you have now can, offer you the option to add notes at the moment that something happens. Okay, I'm exercising now, that's why, okay? And this exercise was uh, uh, climbing mountains on my bike. So that's why I went uh, on hyper this time. But yesterday it was just a jogging, five kilometers, steady pace. So that's why I went slow, okay? So take notes, that's the key. 
And Tammy, something you want to add? Just take the time to read the number, but do something with the number. I yeah. think this is the, 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 the key point for me. You have to do something with the result you have in the front of you. And you have to just observe and say, did I have symptom? Did I have explication for the result I have and where my, my blood glucose going uh, in the 20 minutes and in 30 minutes? And if you Thanks. take the time to analyze, you have better control and less variability. Absolutely. Excellent. And I, I see, uh, I first noticed that now it's time to leave, but the Victoria uh, asked a very good question. How do menses impact variability? And that's an excellent question. And the answer is it depends. Uh, most of the time, the, the two or three days before the menstruation up to in, let's say up to the middle of the menstruation, there's a raise in your blood glucose, glucose because of the, the, the hormonal change that uh, happens just before the menstruation will push, will push the glucose higher. So we'll need more insulin, but that's a rule. And as any rule, there are some exceptions. So it can depend. Some people will have, uh, the majority of, of, of people won't have any big noticeable change in their blood glucose around the menses. But when it happens, most of the time, they, they get higher. So I think this is it. Yes, thank you so much for listening and sorry for the French accent. Uh, that and was cool. Uh, I, I, they, they understood. I, I, I'm pretty sure they understood all you had to say. So the, for the rest of it, it was just cool. So thank you very much and okay. uh, maybe see you next time. Goodbye.